Hi guys! Now, Lagos can be a very expensive place and to be honest, a lot of people don't earn enough money to meet their needs. That's why every Naira earned is very valuable. But what's also very valuable is every Naira you're able to save. And being a good saver has one special advantage over earning lots and lots of money in the sense that saving helps to teach you how to retain wealth and to grow wealth. Because to be honest, what's the point of having lots of inflows of cash when you also have lots of outflows of cash where that money is seeping out through? At the end of the day, you won't retain very much and you may find yourself back at square one. That's why in this video, I'll be sharing with you a few tips on how you can save money while living in a big city like Lagos. Number one, reward programs and loyalty cards. Now, lots of stores, cinemas, and other service providers run loyalty programs where if you sign up, the more you purchase items from them, the more points you get on your loyalty card. And once those points reach a certain limit or a certain threshold, you'll be entitled to either free products or a discount on future purchases. For example, a cinema with a loyalty card or a reward program may say that if you see four movies, you get to see the fifth one for free. Now that fifth movie is money saved and money in your pocket, but you can only enjoy it if you've signed up for the reward program. So be sure to ask at places where you do business frequently or places where you shop often to see if they have a reward program or a loyalty card. Number two, sign up for and use the e-tag and Swift Pass at the toll gate. Now, if you live in Lagos and you use the toll gate or toll bridge rather frequently, you should do yourself a favor and sign up for the e-tag or Swift Pass. Because once you do, you're, you'll be given an account for your vehicle and every time you use the toll bridge, you'll be charged a little less than if you were to pay with cash. I think it's about 10% less. Another advantage of the e-tag and Swift Pass is that once you have it, you can actually access the express lane and using that express lane saves you so much time at the toll gate. Number three, carpool. Now, if you and a friend or a colleague travel to and from a particular area of town every day or at least regularly, you should really consider carpooling. Now, how it works is that one of you leaves your car at home and then two of you go in one car. I have a friend who does this and it saves her lots of money and stress and not to mention that it means there's one less car on Lagos roads. Now in order not to seem like you're the only one benefiting from the arrangements, you could once in a while offer to drive your friend's car perhaps if they look like they need a nap or you can buy snacks for everyone in the car from time to time. Number four, make a budget. Now having a budget has several benefits. It helps you make financial priorities and it helps you know in advance where your money is going. But how having a budget helps you save money is that once you have a holistic view of where your money is going that week, that month or that year, you can then think critically about what needs to stay, to stay and what needs to go. What you have to buy now and what you can afford to put off till later, perhaps when things are on sale. A budget will also keep you on the lookout for special offers and sales and other opportunities to save money. And these are things you may not have done if you didn't have a budget to begin with. Number five, make a shopping list. A shopping list is very similar to a budget in the sense that it helps you prioritize whether you're going to the store or whether you're on holiday. It also helps you keep from wandering aimlessly around the aisles of stores. Why? Because you already know what you want and you end up saving the most valuable resource of all, which is time. Having a shopping list also keeps you from buying unnecessary things which you don't need, which to be honest is something we're all guilty of. Having a shopping list will also keep you from making multiple trips to the stores. And I'm sure there are a lot of married men out there that can appreciate that particular point. Number six, keep an eye out for special offers. Now, special offers are everywhere and discounts as well. You just need to be able to sniff them out and be observant to find them. For instance, this year alone, my internet service provider has done two buy one month, get one month free offers. Now, special offers are very popular with things like concert tickets or movie tickets or tickets for plays, where, for example, if a single ticket was 5,000 Naira, and a couple ticket was 8,500 Naira, all you'd need to do would be to call up a friend and see if they'd like to go and two of you can take advantage of the couple ticket and save some money in the process. If special offers and discounts are your thing or your cup of tea, then you might want to also follow websites like dealday.com where they have listings of several types of discounted offers and special offers 
in categories, more categories than you can probably think of. So you might want to check them out. Number seven, buy in bulk. Buying in bulk is one of those skills that our mothers mastered and one that we need to master as well. Certain items, especially non-perishables, are cheaper when they are bought in bulk than when they are bought in smaller units. And therefore, you're able to stretch your money out a bit more. Not to mention that you end up making fewer unscheduled trips to the supermarket to restock. Number eight, setting out early. It's often said that you can earn more money, but you can't earn more time. We all have 24 hours in a day, and I think that makes time the most valuable resource of all. And think about it, we end up spending more money when we're late. You get on the road late and you don't have a breakfast before you leave home, so you end up buying food on the way or buying lunch when you could have packed a lunch from home. Or we get on the road late and we have to take the toll gate and pay to use it when we could have taken the slightly longer but free alternate route. Or we get to a venue late and we have to pay for parking when we could have you know, paid a little less or not paid at all had we gotten there early. So at the end of the day, if you're able to plan your movements and set out early, you save not only time, but you also save some money. Well, that's it guys. Eight tips on how you can save money while living in a big city like Lagos. If you have any tips of your own, please feel free to share them in the comment section below so that we can all benefit from them. Thanks once again. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.